So what's our topic today? How about this? How about we do some question and answer? Here's your story, let's begin. The water's fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before your eyes. A couple days ago, I did an overnight trip to Cuenca, and I put some uh, video clips. I had hoped it would have been a sunny day. I had some uh, shots planned. Uh, the entire afternoon, actually, I had planned out, and then it was overcast and rainy. And so I ended up not doing that. Um, the next morning I woke up. The mornings are usually pretty nice in Cuenca. It just so happened it, it had horrible rain. And the river was flowing fast and looked like mud. And so uh, none the next day. But I got a few clips and so uh, from where I was staying. And so I'll put those up. So let's get to the question and answers. First one is, how do you put up with all the chickens and dogs? Isn't it really annoying? Okay, um, first of all, there, there wasn't a lot of difference between Cuenca and anywhere else in the countryside with chickens. You're going to hear them all over Cuenca. The dogs, it was a problem in Cuenca. I had trouble sleeping. When you have 40 dogs running around at 2 o'clock in the morning and uh, they're all barking, it's, it's really loud. And that was one of my issues. Here, for a while, when I first came here, it was pretty quiet. You have dog once in a while barking. It got pretty bad. I don't know what was going on, but it was throughout the day. Now, I will say in the evening, you almost never hear any dogs barking here. But uh, during the day it got pretty bad and now it's cleared up and I don't know what happened but there's a lot less dogs in the neighborhood so I don't know what occurred. And I want to take a moment here to uh, make a little announcement. Tomorrow will be Saturday and I was invited to uh, go down into town and meet up with a couple people. Uh, one, one is a regular viewer uh, because they're out here with some vets and they're doing um, a spay and neuter uh, program. So I don't know the detail. Uh, I'm going to take my camera. Hopefully I can do an interview or something and get some more information. If there's ever a place on this planet that needs it, it's here. And so I'll report back to you on that. Back to the chickens and the dogs. Yeah, I have a chicken, one particular chicken, right up this way, that doesn't want to shut up. Now, right now, it's quiet, but he crows all the time, and I'm just hoping for the day when they eat him. There's a lot of chickens in the area, and they're pretty quiet, so um, I don't know. I don't know the deal. That's just the luck of the draw. You're going to get that. As far as the dogs go, it's quieted down substantially. Now, there was never much of an issue at night here in Hidon. Uh, that was in Cuenca. There's far more of a dog issue in Cuenca. But here, not so much. And now, lately, with a lot of these dogs that have moved along or whatever, it's pretty quiet. Um, you don't hear anything right now. And you may during the course of the video, but it'll be short-lived. It's to the point where it's, it's not very often and I don't even notice it that much anymore. Um, why no aerial pictures or video when you are locked outside in your underwear? Okay, the ob answer is obvious and I'm not reading it because of that, it just kind of made me laugh. Um, your house is so big. Why do you have a house with five bedrooms and is it expensive? It looks, or sorry, it looks expensive. Okay, I've mentioned this before. Um, a, a lot of things become repetitive because I can't expect everyone to watch all 100 plus videos. First of all, the house was not expensive. Uh, Maria helped me find it and negotiate it. And this five bedroom house in a nice uh, neighborhood is um, $250 a month. With utilities, it comes to $300 a month. 
So why five bedrooms? Well, why not five bedrooms? Does it really matter? I like the house. I like the area. Would I, should I say no because it's not a two bedroom or a one bedroom? No, it's crazy. I have five bedrooms. I put beds in them. That might have been great. I don't know why. I just didn't like to see the empty room. But the doors are shut on the rooms. I, you know, just because it's a big house doesn't mean I have to go to all the rooms. And I don't. I have all these empty rooms. It doesn't matter. I use the kitchen. I use the dining room. I use the living room. I use my bedroom. I use one bath and shower uh, so I don't use the, all the others. And I use this um, this room here, which is like an office space, could have been a bedroom. Um, I use it as, I, I guess, kind of a sad representation of a studio. I even put green paint on the wall, which I use occasionally. So, why did I get the house? I got the house because it was a nice house. The price was fantastic. And why not have a nice house? Why not have five bedrooms? Doesn't matter, who cares? I'm very happy with it. Um, lunch. El Muerzo. If it's so unhealthy, why do you eat them? Well, I don't eat them very often because they're mostly, not because it's unhealthy, they're really kind of boring to me. Um, it's just not, I'm not a fan of it, but I'll tell you what, if I were here at, at a working age, and let's say I was going to work every day, and, and I just want some food to carry me through the afternoon, they're great for that, the price is great. I'm, I'm not complaining, but let me tell you how I eat them. I don't eat the mote, I don't like mote, that overboiled giant hominy corn, I just don't like the taste. I used to like rice, I've just kind of lost my taste for it, I have it once in a while. But just having white rice just doesn't float my boat anymore. So when it comes and it's, you know, mostly the rice, I don't eat the rice. So if it's a little piece of chicken or something like that, I eat that. The minuscule portion of vegetables that you usually get, I eat those. If it comes with little beans, I'll have maybe a couple tablespoons of rice in total and I'll eat the beans. But here's what I do. It generally comes with a bowl of soup. I like the soup, I eat the soup. I pick around at the plate, eat the chicken, the seco de pollo, and then I just set it aside. Nobody says I have to eat that rice. And very often I'll tell them, sin mote, sin arroz, because you can bring it without those to me and don't waste your money on me. Well, I don't know. They that bothers them so they bring rice anyway but maybe a smaller portion I'm not going to eat it I hate to see it get thrown away and then you also get uh, fresh juice um, and I realize for those who are going to say something that juice it's healthier to eat the vegetable raw but they're not giving me a raw vegetable they're giving me a juice so it's fine so I eat the soup I drink the juice and I'll have a little bit of the chicken or something for $2.50, that's a bargain. So I don't need that whole plate of empty calorie carbohydrates that I don't really particularly like anyway. So yeah, why not have that? Except to me, it gets really boring. And so if I have that once or maybe twice a week or not at all in a week, that's, that's plenty. Um, Why are your vlogs, vlog is the video log, why are your vlogs not personal, but your blog, my website where I write, but your blog is personal? Why is that? That's a really good question that is a little difficult for me to answer because I don't know if I have an exact question. I might need a psychiatrist to sort that one out. But here's the way I see this. These videos I'm doing for a specific pur purpose of speaking to people wanting to come here, want to know what it's like, and or are here recently and they're just looking for information. 
some shortcuts. That's what these are for. These are not to get into, you know, my personal life. Now the blog, I actually started for people that I knew in the U.S. to keep them up and informed. And when I sit down and I write those, in my mind, I'm really writing to them. And so they're not interested in El Morzo's here. They're interested in how am I feeling, what's going on, what's my frame of mind, that kind of thing. And so that's what it is. Now, there's nothing to hide, so it's open to the public. You can see it. There's links. There's certain videos. I will put some things there that never go in the videos. I put some photos that never show up here. And so, you know, I can kind of give an overall picture. But if you could care less about me, which is what I would expect, you're not really going to find those blogs interesting. And it's, so they're really for two different purposes. Why do you live where it always rains? Okay, because for months I've been talking about rain and on Facebook and other vlogs you see rain, rain, rain. You see in the news mudslides and that kind of thing. This is unusual. You have to understand. It's not, this is not typical. It's not what it's like generally. It's an unusual year. It's a record-breaking year. And last year it was not like this. We have our rainy season, which is uh, winter in North America. Technically it's summer here, but it's actually the colder, wetter time of year. We have that, but it's very different than what it's been. And that will go, it'll go back to normal. This is just an effect of the El Nino and it, that'll happen every decade or two. And it's happening now. Um, it's been getting a lot sunnier. I had seven days in a row uh, last week that here in Hidon, it was beautiful. Now in Cuenca, I went twice last week to Cuenca and both days it was raining. I came back out here and the sun was still shining. Um, why are all the fountains empty in all the uh, central parks, in all the towns? It was asked by somebody who did a tour of a lot of the towns around Cuenca, you know, plus Cuenca. Well, they actually did the tour around the time of the year, the Carnival, and that Carnival, um, here the tradition is to soak people with water. And that could be pretty, it got pretty annoying for a lot of people, and so the the towns would pass regulations about you can't do that, but then you'd have a fountain right there. The temptation was too strong, and so they would empty it. Now, in this last Carnival, I actually went to Paute and did a video on that, and I show the kids grabbing each other, throwing them in the fountain, splashing around, having a good time. That town allowed the water to remain, but all the other towns, it was dry. Now, other times of the year, does that happen? Yeah, sometimes they just leave them dry, but you'll see that a lot or most of those fountains come alive again once they get past that time of year um, when that's for them a concern. So um, it was really a matter of timing. And that's all I have for now. Um, I'll do this uh, every once in a while. I hope you enjoyed some of the uh, little screenshots I did here. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for the subscriptions. Thank you for all the likes. Um, it's been overwhelming. Um, and I do have information on the Patreon account down below if you're so inclined. The people that did uh, uh, send donations for the uh, camera equipment, that sort of thing. Uh, thank you so much. Generosity kind of, it floors me and I appreciate it. So, um, You know you could